Right then, folks. So, um, good afternoon, and I hope everyone can hear me. So, I'm delighted to welcome you to the Pipeline Industry Guild webinar on this very special Tuesday, which is International Women in Engineering Day. My name is Kate Lazenby, and I am the second deputy chair of the Pipeline Industry Guild, and I work for Crossdane. I'm joined today by three inspirational women, all of whom share a mutual interest in the pipeline industry and are connected through PIG. So first up, we have Professor Ruth Allen, who is the first female chair of the Pipeline Industry Guild, honorary life member and MD of RSKW. We have Joe Parker, past chair of the Midlands branch, former chair of the utilities panel, and also an honorary life member of the Pipeline Industry Guild. And she's also the director of Watershed Associates. And last but by no means least, we have Sophie Tucker, who is a Utilities Panel Committee member and Sustainable Drainage Manager of United Utilities. So first of all, I'd like to give you a little bit of an insight into me and how I got involved in PIG. So I've been with Costain, which was formerly Reed Group for 10 years now. And my experience has extended to document control lead, to performance analyst, to account lead. All of these roles have been predominantly within the energy sector and primarily in gas. However, my experience does encompass a bit of water and a bit of electric as well. All these roles, I've had to use my core strengths in communication and organisation in order to achieve the goals required. My drive and my leadership skills have enabled me to promote the non-technical aspects of the pipeline industry, such as project controls, risk, commercial and even soft skills. With a working knowledge of technical engineering within the energy sector, I believe I've been fundamental in blending the technical and non-technical roles connected within the pipeline industry, bringing a broader participation and understanding within the Guild. So I joined the Midlands branch of the Pipeline Industry Guild back in 2014, after being introduced to Joe Parker via my colleague Gavin. Now, at the time, I didn't quite understand how my role of document control manager would ever fit into the pig and how I could even contribute. However, it soon became clear that despite not being an engineer, I was able to provide organisational skills and bolster the enthusiasm for the industry through this group. So a year later, saw me taking up the role of dinner convener, where I supported the next three chairs through their annual dinners. Having played an active role in the committee, I was able to progress and in 2018, I was delighted to be nominated and become the Midlands branch chair. Uh, it was a real honour to be branch chair through 2018 and even into 2019. And the female vein continues with Rachel Bridge of Fisher German now leading the Midlands branch. I'm incredibly passionate about the Guild and its purpose and want to play a key part in ensuring the Guild's sustainability. 2020 sees me able to support the Guild in a wider capacity at national level. With the landscape of our industry evolving and technology being at the forefront, especially during COVID, I want the Guild to be the go-to place for all things within the pipeline industry. One of my key aims is to promote equality and diversity within the pipeline industry. The Guild has been active for 63 years, yet it took until 2002 to have the wonderful Professor Ruth Allen at the helm as National Chair. 20 years on, and in 2022 it will be my turn. Let's hope it won't be another 20 years before we see the next female chair. So, I'm going to show you a little video clip now, um, which is from Shell, and it's very apt for today's theme. So I'm just going to share my screen and hopefully this technology won't fail me. There we go. Those clothes don't make you look good. Are you putting on weight or something? She only got the position because she's a woman. You don't want to be an engineer. That's a man's job. These are real things women engineers have actually heard. Why doesn't your husband...
salesman just let you stay home? Hey, sweetie, when you got it, man, I'll get a cup of coffee. Look who's wearing earrings today. You got promoted too? So we've only got one lady's bathroom. It's up three flights of stairs. Nice breath, Sarah. Good to see you making an effort. File that for me. That's a good girl. Oh, great. I'm so glad there's another we woman here. We won't tiptoe around you because you're a woman, you know. You still have to put in the same amount of work. So I guess you'll be starting a family soon, huh? Hey, guys, no swearing. There's a woman in the room. I don't think this university is ready for a female president. Are you sure you'll be able to handle this course? It's, it's quite advanced. We'll do the more technical stuff, and you can uh, take notes. Okay? This work is very strong. Have you thought about applying for the Chancellor's Fellowship too? You're so good at math and science, you have to apply to these top universities. Have you thought about a career in engineering? I'll help you research, and we'll put together a poster for the science. Who's my clever girl? Did you build that all by yourself? That's amazing. I'm so proud of you. Be the difference. Close the gender gap. Let's make the future. What would you say if you heard someone saying these things? I would say, why would you say something like that? I can do whatever you can do, and even if you do think that, we women will show you that we can do it. Comment below what you would say. So I'm sure you'll all agree that that was quite a thought provoking clip there. Um, and our PDN obviously plays a huge role within the Pipeline Industry Guild. So we need to inspire those younger generations. So that's enough from me and my voice. So I'm very pleased now to welcome the inspirational Joe Parker. Thank you, Joe. Well, um... <laughs> With an introduction like that, it's um, uh, follow that. But um, first of all, Kate, thank you very much for um, inviting me to join this. And um, I would say that Kate was an absolute rock um, in her role as dinner convener um, for the Midlands branch and um, made a huge difference to um, my year as chair so I really appreciated that. Um, going back a bit further though how I came into the industry well I actually decided I wanted to be an engineer at the age of 14 Uh, it's amazing. I can still remember. I really like maps, and we did something called plan and elevation, uh, sort of basic technical drawing at school, and I thought this was really interesting. Um, and so I thought of being an architect, but um, I was crap at art, unbelievably bad at art, and I thought all well, my houses will be boring boxes. And I mentioned this to my parents at dinner one day, and my dad said, "Well, it sounds like you want to be a civil engineer." So I found out about it and I thought, yep, yeah, I like the sound of that. And I went to university, studied civil engineering and uh, joined the water industry when I graduated because it had, um, there'd just been a re restructuring. There are all these new water authorities and the, particularly the wastewater side was in a dreadful state. I can remember they found sewage works that were so overgrown, they had to fight their way through to them. Um, local authorities hadn't been maintaining them. Um, and I got a job with Thames Water in Oxford and one of my first uh, assignments was designing some extra treatment for Abingdon sewage works, which had been uh, failing water quality standards. And so I had a go at designing that, which was a bit scary, but people did help me. And I then went out on site and actually saw it being built, which was brilliant, and also got me the experience I needed to become a chartered engineer. Um, and I moved around Thames Water and I actually decided I'd love to have a go at the operational side. So I applied for some jobs and started to be told, well, you've not got experience of managing manual labor, so you can't have an operational job. 
but I won't get experience of managing labor, manual labor, unless I get an operational job. So um, I uh, kept trying to get these operational jobs. And in the end, in order to get the right experience, I accepted a one year secondment to a charity in Afghanistan which did get me the, uh, the job of managing manual labor, uh, Afghan well diggers, um, interesting challenge. Um, and when I came back, I was made manager of uh, some water treatment works. And um, from there on, I worked a lot in operations. Um, I moved to Wessex Water and there I looked after um, leakage for the first time and this I don't know what it is about managing uh, water networks and leakage particularly but I found that fascinating and I think that's what got me interested in pipes and from then on I sort of moved between production and pipes and um, I think it was actually um, Matt Rolat who some of you remember um, who uh, persuaded me to uh, join PIG when I joined Three Valleys Water, which was uh, now, which is now Affinity, and so I was active with the Southeast Branch. Um, it's interesting some of those comments on Kate's film because um, little story um, from Three Valleys, I moved to North Surrey Water as operations director. And I was on the southeast um, branch at that time and um, was actually quite interested in being chair. And the chair at the time said, yeah, he was sorting out all the roles. So I said, what's going to happen with um, appointments? You know, and he said, don't worry, don't worry, I've got it all sorted. So I said, well, if you're sure. And he said, no, I just need to sort a few things out. And he came back to me um, a, a number of weeks later when I'd been sort of waiting and said, right, I wanted to ask you about your role on committee. So I thought, great, now's my chance to say I'd like to be chair. And he said, would you be secretary? Now, I was director of operations of a water company. I wonder how many other director of operations of water companies have been asked to be the secretary of a branch. Um, anyway, um, I turned him down and actually then moved on to the uh, utilities panel and uh, got very involved in that. And um, uh, I felt that it was something that PIG could do more of, sort of offer real technical um, exchanges and insights and inputs and try to build up the utilities panel, which is, I'm glad to say, now a very active um, uh, group of people. And um, then subsequently, um, Midlands Branch lacked a chair, so I put my hand up there, um, joined, and then um, found that there weren't many people for the committee, so I started uh, um, recruiting various people. And I would say that uh, I met some brilliant people through that who I feel are my good friends. Um, one of them is Kate, um, but there are many others. And um, I uh, had a brilliant time with Midlands and still do. Um, and um, I've been very uh, pleased to um, carry on supporting and um, I did try and buck the trend which I think is something Pig needs to think about that uh, sometimes people work their way through committee levels and become chair and then maybe they go on to national role but if they don't, they often leave the committee and don't stay involved. And um, I regret that because I feel that I have a lot of friends and I learn a lot still um, uh, about um, uh, the pipeline industry and the exchange from the other uh, utilities and energy to, uh, to water and back. Um, 
So um, uh, I uh, have um, continued to be active with them. Um, now I find uh, working uh, in, as an independent consultant, um, I've actually found it useful, although I never actively go out looking for work at events, it's amazing how you chat to people and they say, oh, you're an independent consultant, how, could you do this for me? And I think, oh, could I? And um, actually, um, uh, nine times out of 10, I'm able to help. And uh, that's a very rewarding part of it from my point of view. Um, Working overseas has been quite interesting and um, the overseas panel has uh, sometimes uh, has been supportive. Um, and I think this is an area where pipeline engineers can do a huge amount of good. Uh, I'm doing a lot of work with um, water utilities in Africa and um, maybe just mentioning at the moment um, in this country uh, utilities have done a fantastic job they kept all utilities running uh, during the pandemic um, and on the water side in spite of mammoth demands highest ever recorded in some cases the water has kept flowing which of course is incredibly important in the pandemic just imagine what it's like to be um, an engineer in charge of a water department in a municipality in, for instance, Zimbabwe, um, where I do some work. Um, you have a water network that's very similar to water networks in this country, but there are uh, trade embargoes, so you can't always get hold of materials even when things are okay. And now you're up against the planning for the pandemic and you are wondering what's going to happen with income, what's going to happen with materials, um, how you're going to operate. Um, so I've been working with some of these um, organizations to uh, help them through it, help them with their emergency plans, help them put these together so they can apply for funding from organizations like African Development Bank and World Bank. So um, it's, um, there's always challenges and it's great to know that uh, the people in PIG are there, if only to be a, a friendly face, um, but they do understand some of the issues you're trying to deal with. Um, so that's really what I've been doing in a nutshell. Um, I won't go on for too much longer, um, but I was thrilled to be appointed an honorary life member and I'm equally thrilled to be able to introduce another honorary life member um, who um, has been a, a massive supporter of PIG and that's uh, uh, Ruth. I She is as I understand MD or RSKW, but um, she may explain a bit more, but as Kate said, she was the first female chair. Um, but I think much more importantly, she has, um, she introduced the idea of a network for younger people. She supported them and encouraged them within the guild. So they've become a really important part and I think that's a legacy she should be justifiably uh, proud of. Um, so I'm really pleased to hand on to Ruth to maybe um, tell you all a bit about her background and why she got into PIG and what she's got out of PIG. Thank you. Thanks very much indeed for that Jo. Um, I think you've been very modest about the things you've achieved particularly internationally. I think um, it's fantastic for us all to hear about those sorts of things and um, appreciate how how difficult can, things can be in, in different countries. Um, so uh, what I want to talk to you about is, is a bit about me. So uh, my credentials for being here are that I am a chartered civil engineer. 
Uh, I've worked in the utility stroke, transport stroke, energy sector, uh, specialising in infrastructure for over 40 years now. Um, I started off in a water company in Seven Trent um, and uh, I'm now, uh, and then moved on into consultancy. My work took me um, throughout the UK and internationally as well. My professorship is an honorary role um, at Exeter University in the area of engineering, maths and physical sciences. I've been doing that for about seven years um, and I've been involved with PIG uh, since the early 90s and I will talk a bit more about that um, uh, as we go through. Jo mentioned that I'm Managing Director of RSKW. Well, actually, I uh, retired from full-time work in December of this year, having sold my company to RSK Group just a couple of years ago. Um, I'm still doing bits of consultancy work um, and mentoring work, as well as being Regional President of the Institute of Water um, and also doing um, uh, plenty of gardening and, and keeping fit. So those are my credentials for talking to you today. The things I want to cover, I want to cover talking about inspiration inspiration for people to to study stem subjects for people to do civil engineering a bit about the inspirations in my career um, and how all of us need to um, inspire people i'm going to pick up some of my best bits along the way and and the learning points that i had and also how i think um, the guild and engineers can help manage um, and improve diversity but before i do that just a few stats um, the UK has the lowest percentage of female engineering professionals in Europe. So that's 12.3%. Um, that's uh, back in 2018. In places like Bulgaria and Cyprus, they have a 30% female workforce, so vastly different. And in 2017 in the UK, only 15% of our engineering undergraduates were, were women. In India, and 30% of undergraduates are female. So there's quite a lot of, of work that needs to be done there. And we need to at least double the number of UK university engineering students in order to meet industry demands. Just like in World War II, and, and if you were at the, um, the awards lunch last year where I spoke, I talked about what happened with women, in engineer, women engineers in World War II, where women became a prominent part of manufacturing and engineering due to a shortage of the workforce, which is indeed what we have now. And there's a lot more information about all of that on magnificentwomen.co.uk if you want some, some more information. Recent studies indicate that companies are about 15% more likely to perform better if they have a diverse workforce too. So it is really important. Some really interesting stats that I unearthed when I was looking at this is that girls interviewed around the ages of 11 to 14 would... Uh, 46% of them would consider a job in engineering compared to about 70% of boys. But by the time that got to girls aged 16 to 18, that figure had dropped to 25%. So there's, there's quite a lot of work to be done there. In all STEM A-level subjects except chemistry, girls, more girls get A-star to C grades than boys. And that includes things like further math, maths, ICT and design and technology. And also that young people attending STEM careers activity in the previous 12 months were over three times like, as likely to consider a career in engineering. So the potential is there. We just need to inspire these young people. So moving on from that to my own inspirations, how did I end up here? Well, my physics teacher was a great inspiration to me. John Tobin, his name was. Um, I studied uh, Nuffield physics at A-level at school. I was the only girl that did maths, chemistry and physics A-levels. Um, Nuffield physics was all about uh, learning through experience rather than um, learning through memorising equations and so forth. And one of the things that we did was to build a model bridge and test it to destruction. So then I became interested in engineering and my physics teacher just encouraged me, as did my parents, who, uh, bearing in mind that I went to university in 1976, uh, and women got equal pay in 1972. So, you know, things, things were, were changing a lot around those times. Actually, on that point, if you've never seen the film Made in Dagenham, which is all about that equal pay story, please watch it because it is just a fantastic insight into the way things were then. So my parents were supportive and inspirational in that way. Um, then I met John Banyard, um, who also inspired me. My first job was with Seven Trent recruited by John Banyard. Some of you will know John. He was a director of Seven Trent and a past president of the Guild. 
I was also lucky enough to meet Baroness Platt of Rittle. Um, Baroness Platt was president of the Guild um, a number of years ago, and she was an aeronautical engineer in the war. What a fantastically inspirational woman. And she has done so much for um, equality and, and so forth. And she chaired the Equal Opportunities Commission. I had been invited to take on the role of uh, national chair of the Guild. And, and as Kate says, that was the first time this had happened. Um, and uh, she said to me, you are going to do this, aren't you? So there was, there was no getting out of it. And I also need to, to mention Roberto Pirani, who's a past chair of the Guild and who nominated me for the role of, of national chair. So I think it's important that we remember who's inspired us through our careers. And we also thank them if we think of, of who it is and who's done that. So thank them face to face or thank them through a phone call and then make sure that you inspire other people because then that will, will be self-generating. So inspiration um, is really important. Um, I mentioned that um, I started my degree in 76 and I uh, was really keen to move into the water sector when I qualified, when I finished my degree. Um, and I heard John Banyard speak at a, at a careers event at Loughborough where I did my degree. I was the only girl in 100 doing civil engineering then. There, was not, there were not many jobs in the, in the water sector that year and I was determined to get one. John came along and talked, and here comes my first learning point, which was that John said, when I, hit, when I get CVs in from people and I have a job this year, um, if, I, if I can't read the CV, it goes straight in the bin. Okay, I need to learn from that. So I borrowed a typewriter um, and I had an application form to fill in and I filled in the application form using the typewriter and driving the people in the flat underneath me, absolutely insane, I think. But I got the job. And I think the learning point from all of that is, is nothing is impossible, just difficult. If you really want something, just, just go for it. And all the way through my career, I feel I've learned from others and I've also learned to ask for help, um, particularly during many years on construction sites. Construction workers know their work. Um, they'll explain it to you and be pleased to do so. I felt I really learned an awful lot more about civil engineering when I came to work on site. Engineering also allowed me to travel. Um, I worked in countries from America across to Borneo and, and all other places in between. Um, I've also had the opportunity to learn another language. So I'm also fluent in Italian now because of, of work that I'd done and, and learning that I was able to go through. I also learned that um, in business and in, in construction, it's okay to be nice. Um, be kind to your network, help them, and they will help you. It works. You don't need to be aggressively competitive to get on in life. A big heart and a kind soul always wins out. As uh, Peter Laws, ex of Clancy Docker, I think many, many people may know him, said to me once, um, people do business with people they like, and, and it's very true. It's also great to be able to demonstrate, I think, your passion for things you believe in. As I mentioned earlier, I was introduced to the Guild um, in about 1991, having just returned from maternity leave after having my first child. Um, by the lovely Roger Stokes, who was my boss um, when I ran the Pipeline Technology Group at, at WRC. So I got involved in the Wales and West branch. I was secretary and then chair um, and sat on what was then the Guild Council. An interesting story for you related to um, uh, the, the Wales and West group and shows the inclusive nature of the Guild really. My second child, Harriet, um, came along rather earlier than expected, about nine weeks early. Um, so she was supposed to have arrived after the AGM, and in fact, she arrived before it. So what was required to happen was that I took Harriet to the AGM, complete with grandma to look after her, um, and managed to uh, run the event and go through it with the whole, whole huge support of, of the whole committee there. So again, I think that shows how wonderfully inclusive that, um, the Guild is. I always had a passion to support young engineers. Um, and, and one of the meetings of the Guild Council, which was the forerunner to the, the Guild Board, um, somebody at the meeting said, it's really great to have a woman involved in the Guild. How can we get more women involved in the Guild? What, what do you think we should do, Ruth? And I said, well, I, I think if we just had an initiative to bring in younger people to the Guild, by default, that would be a, a more diverse um, group of people that we would bring in and there, will, there would be more young women in that. And they said, okay great you do it so that was then how the youth initiative started and the pdn um, as it is now um, and i think good ideas have legs 
um, your passion will inspire others. So as soon as I started to do this work, everybody in the Guild got behind it and we have the wonderful thriving um, Young People's Network, um, or the Professional Development Network, as it is now um, across the UK. It's fantastic. Youth and enthusiasm and energy is infectious and the, the, the diversity in the Guild, I think, continues to transform it. Um, the Ruth Allen Award, if we just look at the number of people and the diverse group of people that have won that, I think it shows that the, the the, a great inclusivity ben benchmark for the Guild. So I've had a fantastic time in my career. I've done technical innovation, I've travelled, I've been CEO of small and large companies, um, and, I've, and I've started my own business. The final point that I want to make takes me back to the stats that I mentioned at the start. We do need to inspire and encourage tiny problem solvers at primary schools, I think. We need to support children and teachers and parents in understanding what engineering is about and what great and exciting careers there are available and that there are many routes to becoming an engineer. And I know Sophie is going to pick up on that when she talks in a minute. We need to keep that support up through school and university so that we address the shortfall in engineering resources in the UK and cultivate the diverse workforce that is so essential um, to encourage different perspectives and drive the innovation that we need. I believe the Guild has a role to play in this and I am definitely willing to help. So that's all I want to say now and I would like to um, pass across to Sophie Tucker. As mentioned earlier, Sophie is Sustainability uh, Drainage Manager at United Utilities and a member of the Guild Utilities Panel Committee. So Sophie, over to you, please. Thanks, Ruth. Um, two great, great, great speeches so far and an insight into your career. Um, both, both inspirational, so thank you for that. Tough, tough acts to follow. Um, so yeah, those of you that don't know me, uh, as Ruth just said, I'm Sophie Tucker and I work for United Utilities. Um, so in my talk today, I'm going to uh, share a bit of an insight of how I actually got into, into engineering. Um, so just before I start that, so I work for United Utilities, who are the Northwest Water and Sewerage Company. Um, it's our job to keep the, flat, the taps flowing and the toilets flushing for 3 million homes and 200,000 business customers across our region. So it is, um, I must admit that from my point of view, um, which I guess is, is quite positive and it shows things are coming on uh, within United Utilities as a, as a company itself, there is a good representation of, of both male and females. Um, however, there's certainly uh, on, the, on the technical side um, and certainly in the supply chain engaging with contractors, uh, it tends to be more, more males that I deal with day to day. So I was recently asked the question um, about how I actually got into a career in engineering. And uh, my response really was, actually it was totally by accident. Um, which then I started to think, well, okay, I knew I always enjoyed finding solutions to problems. And I also reflected and, and recognized that I was, I was reasonably good and always enjoyed SEM subjects. Um, but then it made me think, and if I, if I sort of go back to where I was when I was in high school, um, certainly around the career advice that I was I was getting, engineering was never never once mentioned in any career advice or discussions, and also apprenticeships uh, were never discussed. So once I finished my A levels, so I did um, A levels in the sciences and, and physical education. Um, and then I, I was promoted to, uh, I had a part-time job and I was promoted to full-time. So I also recognise um, sort of my background and where I come from. So, you know, neither of my parents um, have, have got degrees or ever went to university um, from a reasonably sort of low-income household. I had the best parents in the world, you know, that always encouraged me to aim high, but it's fair to sort of recognise and acknowledge that a career in civil engineering wasn't really a typical path for, for me, really. Um, so, yeah, I got a, um, I got a full-time job, but then after that, I was thinking, well, what do I want to do? You know, that was working in retail, that was clear, that was not something that, you know, interested me. I found that I was fairly bored. And to be honest, at 21, I, I managed to get an apprenticeship for United Utilities and that was problem solved. You know, earn while you learn. There's, there's that routine. 
So I guess reflecting on um, a lot of what Ruth has just certainly talked about in her um, discussion, it does make you think, well, actually, what can we all do to try and inspire the next generation to try and normalise um, and bring more female engineers into the industry? Because um, as you say, um, diversity from all angles, you know, is, is really important to, um, to have that uh, collaboration and diverse workforce and, and find solutions to problems. Um, so in terms of my role in, in the Pipeline Industries Guild, um, I've been involved with the utilities panel since um, I think it was summer 2018, so reasonably new to the guild. Um, I, I joined the guild because I met Phil Clisham, um, who delivered pipeline design training to uh, United Utilities over, I think it's about a four to six week period. Um, which is funny, really, because uh, when, when we think of pipelines, um, I, I've, I've done my degree in civil engineering on day release, sponsored by United Utilities. Um, but in doing that, when you think of the, um, the different modules that you study, a lot of it was more focused around sort of buildings and structures as opposed to sort of thinking of infrastructure design and pipeline design. Um, so, yeah, it was interesting that I was doing my civil engineering degree part time, but the company still felt like they needed to potentially source additional training um, that was specific to sort of pipeline and, and water uh, for United Utilities. So, yeah, um, I just think it's it's really important to think how can we as, as well engage more um, younger people and more females in, in the work that the Pipeline Industries Guild does. And in the in the sort of 20, 25 year plan, um, I know they've been looking into uh, how they can make it a bit more inclusive and encourage greater membership from um, from more younger people as well as more females. And I think that would be a really good thing to do. Um, I've had some conversations with people on the PDN in terms of how can we do a bit more in terms of STEM engagement, actually get out there and talk about sort of our careers and our journeys and just try and encourage um, more people to, to find a career in this space. So I, um, at United Utilities, I've done a, a number of roles. So after doing my apprenticeship, um, I, I got a role in operations. Um, so basically the team that uh, maintain the, the assets and infrastructure to deal with customers um, flows, they call it from sort of Bath to Bay. Um, and yeah, I, I've, I've worked in a number of different business areas in terms of I, I did network maintenance so with all the pumping stations team, uh, network field team, um, the maintenance alliance at the time, which was our, us and our partners at the time, Amy, um, working together on a number of issues, as well as um, doing sort of very small projects, so very small capital scheme projects up to the value of sort of £250,000, small interventions. Um, Sewer flooding mitigation, where unfortunately, you know, customers that are impacted and um, seeing if we can mitigate the properties and stuff like that. So there's, there's so many different roles and so many different people that I've had the pleasure of meeting and working with. But um, what I'd like to do is think, how can we, um, you know, if someone says, what is an engineer? Actually, what you find is the different people that you speak to, um, although they're, they're all in, in some respect working in engineering you know we all do different roles and we're involved in different things so I think that's really important to to talk about and let people know what's available and what's out there um, and yeah I, I, I guess um, my current role and I think this is this is sort of important as a reflection as a female as well because uh, certainly my peers you know when I was part-time at uni as a um, as a job student with with them it's um, it's funny how females sort of tend to um, recognise what they think they can't do and um, perhaps, you know, worry about going for certain things or, you know, when people are encouraging to do something, I think we focus on the areas that we feel like we're lacking as opposed to sort of having that confidence to, um, you know, focus on the, the areas that we are good at. So I think this, it's, it's great to have heard from Jo and uh, Ruth and, and Kate um, to just see them as role models as well, absolutely. Because um, I think that's really important to inspire um, other females, you know, to, to push themselves and progress through their career. So reflecting on something that um, Ruth talked about as well, 
um, was about learning to ask for help and learning to ask questions. So something that the Guild has been really good for, for me and my development. Um, so I'm actually only a graduate member of the Institute of Civil Engineers and I'm currently capturing sort of all that evidence base to go through that professional development. And one thing that's really great about the Pipeline Industries Guild is actually that introduction to a network of people that are so sort of kind and generous with their time. And if you ever got a problem or something that you want to discuss, you know, it's absolutely brilliant that they'll, you know, take that time to sort of help you and explain things and, and make sure you understand. So it really is invaluable. And of course, although I've, I actually do the role as technical secretary um, to the utilities panel, What's great about that is every meeting that I attend, I, uh, I actually go back and do a big reflection and record all that CPD hours and, and what I've learned just from listening to a, a number of experts around the table. So it is a really great thing to, to be involved in. And, you know, where I am in my career, it's OK to know my limitations, um, but it is really great to be able to um, engage with uh, a network of people who can sort of help me and um, yeah, I answer a lot of questions, which they, they do all the time. Um, and yes, that's, that's really what I wanted to talk about um, and share with you today. So if it's OK, I'm just going to hand you back to uh, Kate, who's going to summarise and do some closing remarks for us. Thank you for that, Sophie. And also thank you to Joe and Ruth for all your sort of inspirational and motivational talks today. There's been some really kind of key themes coming out of those talks, particularly around asking for help. Uh, I'm a fine one for that. As I've said before, I'm not necessarily an engineer, but a lot of my engineering awareness is coming from, from people that are willing to help. Uh, and willing to offer their expertise and their mentoring skills. So um, thank you very much to, to all three of you for taking the time out to, to talk to us today. Um, and if anybody has any questions for the guests, then please do email events at pipeguild.com and Joe, Sophie and Ruth will all be happy to respond. So Last sort of thanks has to go to, to everybody that's participated in today's webinar. So thank you for dialing in. And just before I close, uh, I'd like to remind you all not to forget to visit the PIG website. Click on the events tab and see the details of the latest webinars we're offering. And most importantly, obviously how to book your place. And just to whet your appetite, so for those of you that have got Kitty Winkles, we have another in our children's webinar series, which is hosted this week by Seven Trent Water. Uh, so that will be uh, really good to get the, the young minds and inspire uh, the younger generation. And then for those of you with or without Kitty Winkles, uh, to finish off the week, why don't you have a go at our much loved Pint of Pipelines quiz which is taking place this Friday and is hosted by our Irish branch. So I appreciate we're a little bit ahead of time, which is great. Um, so you all guys have got a little bit extra time, but all that's left to say is thank you once again to everybody that's participated. Uh, thank you to our speakers. Stay safe and have a great rest of your Tuesday. Thank you.